Diabetes is one of the most common diseases in America. In fact, 38 million Americans suffer from diabetes. The most common forms are type 1 diabetes, which tends to happen in children and young adults. Then there's type 2 diabetes, which often happens later in life. But have you ever heard of diabetes type 1.5? Well, getting the right diagnosis can be really difficult. And even if you do, there can still be a lot of frustration. This one drills. For new mother Elizabeth Babcock, the birth of her son Teddy kicked off two journeys, parenthood and the fight for a correct medical diagnosis. I first found out that I had gestational diabetes. A form of insulin resistance where the body can't make enough insulin during pregnancy. It occurs in up to about 10% of births and 50% of those women go on to develop type 2 diabetes. That was Elizabeth's next diagnosis. But after losing her pregnancy weight, she gained it all back. She went to the doctor and they found that her blood glucose was over 300. So dangerous, they couldn't complete all of the planned tests. So the nurse came in and said, I can't give you the sugar drink because it might kill you. Further antibody testing pointed to type 1 diabetes. Elizabeth was on long-acting medication, short-acting medication, pills, and injections. It was bewildering even for Elizabeth. Sorry, it's a little confusing because I have so many different diagnoses and so many different medications. It turns out Elizabeth has latent autoimmune diabetes in adults or LATA. It's referred to as diabetes type 1.5. I thought she was joking. <laughs> I didn't know that type one and a half was an actual diagnosis. The disease has some elements of type one and some from type two. Does that present a challenge in diagnosis? Yeah, definitely it does. Dr. Bayan Shocker is an endocrinologist at DMC Sinai Grace. She says type 2 diabetes, which develops later in life, makes up 90% of all diabetes cases. While type 1, an autoimmune form of the disease, usually develops in children and teens, makes up far less. As the name suggests, someone with type 1.5 can live a large portion of their life before ever developing a life-threatening change. They're fine. They don't need anything. Um, and then they start quickly progressing into an insulin dependent type of diabetes. And that's the key. Someone with type 2 diabetes has a broader range of treatment options. Someone with type 1 must take insulin. And so do many with type 1.5. A misdiagnosis can be dangerous or even fatal. You end up being hospitalized and at that time you need um, fluids, you need insulin treatment, you need to stabilize your blood sugars. Is it a medical emergency? It's definitely a medical emergency. A lot of times it does require um, ICU admission. But even when you do get the right diagnosis, getting insurance to pay can be its own challenge. Often, insurers don't want to pay for both medications needed to treat type 2 diabetes and the real-time continuous glucose monitoring typically used for type 1. For now, Elizabeth has it all worked out, getting the medication and monitoring she needs to manage her condition, just as it's a relief to finally have answers to her own medical mystery. Now, diabetes type 1.5 has a real genetic component, just like type 1 diabetes. So that means there's no way to stop it from developing. And because of that genetic aspect, Elizabeth says she's watching her son Teddy closely for signs of either condition. And I want to thank uh, Elizabeth for sharing her story. She says she wanted to let people know that this is out there right. so they don't have to go through what she had to go through trying to find the right diagnosis. She must have been so frustrated. I, I can only imagine her frustration. So and thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing. She has answers and she's going to help other people. Without so, a doubt. Great story, Cam.